the U.S. National Championships next month, beyond the likes of Max Aaron and Jason Brown, there will be a group of men vying for personal best performances in a spot on Team USA. Scott Dyer will be one of those men. After a series of national medals on the novice and junior levels, Dyer achieved a career best finish as a senior when he placed 10th at Nationals in 2012. Since that time, however, he struggled to master the consistency needed to live up to his potential and to emulate that success, placing 6th at sectionals in 2013 and a disappointing 18th at Nationals in 2014. What sets Dyer apart from his counterparts on the ice are his long lines and regal style. Off the ice, he's placed as much of a value on his education as he has his skating merits. After being named high school valedictorian in 2010, Dyer moved to Los Angeles to study international relations and global business at USC. He graduated from USC in 2014, but spoke to us about the struggle faced when balancing classes at an elite university while also training full-time on a national level and how it impacted his career. It's a lot. I mean, every semester it changed. Um, sometimes it it was, you know, I would skate in the morning, do evening classes, you know, the next semester it was all morning classes, skate in the afternoon, then one semester it's like some days are different than others. I mean, it's really a balancing act. Um, late nights in the library because, you know, just all those things. And then on top of that, I mean, you know, there's also that balance of like a social life, you know, you have, you know, you're doing this new, you know, adventure in college and you're trying to, you know, you know, enjoy that college experience and then trying to, you know, figure out this, you know, really intense sport that you're doing and that you love. Um, but I really, I thought it was an amazing experience. It was really hard at times. Do I think it slowed down my progression? Um, yeah, probably. Um, but I don't regret it. I really loved going to college, finishing it in four years and, you know, moving on. And now I get to do this thing where I really just get to focus on skating. And then once skating is finished, you know, I'll go on to my next endeavor. I'd really like to go to law school. So that's something I would like to do after this. Um, but yeah, it was very hard. Fatigue was something Dyer had to contend with right before nationals, as midterms and finals held as much importance as his results on the ice. There would be times um, where, yeah, I'd be really tired all the time, um, and it would be, I would get like emotional randomly, because you know, you're just, you're thinking about so many things at the same time. It's like, I have this paper due, this midterm's coming up, I have to train for this competition, and it's just all these things, you know, that are in your head, and it's really a practice on trying to um, almost compartmentalize. You come into the rink, you know, we're doing our job here. Once you're finished here, we, I can go back to school and I can worry about those things. Um, and so I think um, time management and also really being able to focus on one thing at a time, um, going to college was really helpful for that. It was a great learning experience. After graduating from USC in 2014, Dyer was faced with a tough decision. Put all of his focus on his skating career or move his attention on to his next educational endeavor, perhaps law school. In the end, Dyer chose to focus full-time on his efforts on the ice. The decision was not one he took lightly. I mean, there's a lot that goes on in your mind. I mean, I had a, a really awful season last year. I really had a really, really, you could say the past, ever since 2012 when I placed 10th at Nationals, it's really been up and down. Um, and, um, you know, there's a lot of things that were going on. And so once I finished, last season yeah it takes you know you take a little time to think okay so what do you want to do now um, and I really you know when I sat down and thought about it I thought you know what I have a great opportunity here Frank is saying yes to taking me on full time I really don't want to miss this opportunity that I have here and I feel like if I stop now I'm gonna look back and be like you know what I feel feel like I missed something um, and I never want to finish my skating career and feel like you know what I feel like I'm, I missed out on something that I really wanted to do um, and I always believe that I'll know deep down when you know it's time to be done you know I'll have that feeling of you know what I think I've done everything that I've wanted to do um, and I'm ready for some next chapter in my life um, and I had you know I had support from my family um, and I you know Frank said if you really want to do this I think you can do this um, you do keep improving and um, it's really up to you and the decision you make when Dyer first moved to Los Angeles in 2010 he had hoped to start working a 
immediately with world-renowned coach Frank Carroll. It wasn't until 2014, however, that he had the opportunity to train with Carroll, the coach of three world champions. According to Dyer, the wait was worth it. God, Frank is, I mean, he is a fascinating man, um, and he's just someone that has so much knowledge. Um, he actually, what is so beautiful about working with him is he keeps it very simple. Um, it's very, um, God, it's very, um, God, how would I describe it? Yeah, it, like, simple is the best word, and he just, it's, um, he really reminds you that it's just a job. There's really no, it's almost taking the emotion out of the training and really just getting down to business. Um, and also reminding yourself, like, why you do it. He always says, like, do you really love to do this? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, well, you need to remind yourself that because we don't do all this work if we don't love it. Um, and, um, yeah, it's that kind of idea of this is our job. This is, you know, this is what we do full time. And we want to take it as seriously as if you were going into the office every day and you were doing your job. And I think that's what the difference is really kind of honing in on that mindset. Dyer has witnessed noticeable improvements in his skating since training under Carroll. I feel like my consistency has really improved. Um, my focus at the rink has also really improved that I, Frank has really instilled in myself and really all of us that idea of always doing a run through from beginning to end. It doesn't matter how good it is, how bad it is, how tired you are, you know, all those things. It's just that's what you do. That's why we're here. You know, it's our job. Um, and and I think my jumps have, you know, we've been really working on getting the rotations faster, making sure that they're cleaner, making sure that I get all the points that, you know, you're trying to go for. Um, you know, my triple axle has really improved this um, season. I'm really, you know, I have two planned in my long program. I hope it stays that way for nationals because I think it would really put me in a, you know, a good position going in. The increased focus on consistency and run-throughs during training has worked for Dyer so far this season. He placed third last month at the Pacific Coast Sectional Championships, qualifying him for nationals, where he has a concrete goal set for himself, a top 10 finish. We asked Dyer what it would take for him to accomplish this goal. It's going to take really um, solid, clean performances that have great quality to the jumps. Um, you know, I noticed... Um, with some of my earlier competitions, I mean, you're really getting a lot of points for really strong quality jumps. You know, they might not be the most difficult. I know a lot of the top people will be going for one, two, or maybe even three quads if they really want to. Um, I think for me, it's going to take, you know, it is going to take two triple axles. It's going to take two strong triple axles, and it's going to take some really nice skating. I think I. I am fortunate to really be good at getting high levels on my spins, high levels on footwork, um, high, you know, second marks. Um, but I think to take it to that next level, I also need to show that, that, you know, I'm also a technician and I can get these jumps done. While Dyer works to hone his technical content, it's nearly impossible to watch him skate without admiring his style and edge work on the ice. These basics have carried him during the times when his consistency wasn't where he hoped it would be. It really started from the beginning. I mean, when I when I lived back in Baltimore, I had amazing coaches that really instilled all that, um, you know, quality skating into me. I had a lot of skating exercises I had to do every single day. Um, Nathan was on my back all the time about it, and I really, really, really appreciate it now because it's pretty much like in me no matter what, it's automatic. Um, and now, you know, I moved on from getting programs from him and I moved to working with Lori and Lori's really just tried to take it to that next level um, and not just about this actual physical part of the skating, but also like what's inside, like the emotional connection that you have to the music and what story you're trying to tell the audience from people that don't know anything about skating to people that are really well educated with skating. We're trying to connect to that entire spectrum and that's what I've been trying to work on. Adding Lori Nickel to his coaching team has pushed Dyer outside of his comfort zone when it comes to performing. My short program is a tango um, and it was really uncomfortable for me to do at first. I'm very used to doing classical pieces of music um, and uh, Lori really wanted me to not go too far outside of my box but do something that might be a little uncomfortable with me. Kind of having that um, 
attitude and like that kind of sense of almost sex appeal that you need in a tango is uncomfortable for me. I am somewhat of a shy person in general, um, but I've really enjoyed working on it. Um, it is fast paced at the end, but also has some lyrical parts that I can connect to well. Um, and then my long program are selections from the movie Cinema Paradiso. Um, and it's just a, it's a beautiful piece of music. Um, and I love skating to it. Um, and it makes training it a lot easier. When you really, it's always like, it's, I always, um, she always said, you know, you really need to find a piece of music that, I mean, you really, really, really love to skate to. Because if you're going to hear it every single day for months and months and months on end, you have to love it. You can't just like think, oh, it's okay. You know, you got to be like, I really want to skate to this piece of music. With only six weeks before the U.S. Championships, Dyer is working hard and has a clear vision for how he sees his return to the event. You know, I picture it with, you know, a clean performance. Um, I picture it... You know, I, I picture doing what I do in practice and like having, the, you know, enjoying the process of training and going to that moment knowing that I'm prepared and then showing everyone what I've been, you know, preparing for and being able to just put out, you know, a program that I love and being able to connect with the audience so that they know that I love this program. Um, and I think, you know, I'll just have that feeling of like that was, that was it. That's exactly what I wanted and I couldn't be, um, I couldn't be more pleased with it. So that's what I'm really hoping for. Um, I'm excited for this season. I think it's going to be great.